Are you ready? Go! All right, y'all. Welcome back to Retro Rewire, another In The Hunt. My name is JJ. Let's get this started. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Now, this is going to be the final episode for the Gunma, or the Gunma Ota book of Super Bazaar. We'll start with the Nintendo Switch. Now, this section was probably... Well, it was the largest section uh, dedicated to a single platform in the store. As many of you know, the Nintendo Switch is top dog in Japan, and this uh, section uh, really shows that. Um, quite a bit of uh, Switch titles. I actually didn't pick any up as I wasn't really looking for uh, Switch titles, but I definitely wanted to share this section as uh, the Switch does have a huge following. Anyhow, let's take a look at these games. We have Contra Rogue Not a very popular game. It got a, bit, a, bit of, uh, a little bit of flack. But I am a Contra fan and I do have the North American version and I hope to be playing that this year. Happy New Year, by the way, 2022. We have Immortals, Phoenix Rising. I'm not sure what that it's about or what these are about. I know one of them is Disgaea, but definitely loads and loads of RPGs on the Nintendo Switch. So if you're a huge RPG fan, the Switch has you covered and they just keep pumping them out. It's a, it's a crazy thing. But here's one that I do want to try, The Witcher Wild Hunt, or Part 3. Now, The Witcher, as well as uh, this game here, uh, Dragon Marked for something, I can't remember the, the full title. Um, they do have English language support, and a number of these Switch games will have English language support. Here we have Board to the Sky. I have no idea what this is about, not gonna lie, but I think some of you might find this interesting and I try to film a few games that you know that I'm I don't have much interest in because I know a few of you will. We have Derby Stallion, a long running franchise since the Famicom days. And the cover artist, uh, Matsushita san, still doing the cover art, so that's pretty cool to see. Anyhow, let's go ahead and move on to the next section here. We have the Nintendo 3DS and uh, this this was a freaking awesome system, definitely popular in Japan as well. I was expecting to see a slightly bigger section, but you know because it is a, a I guess a legacy console nowadays. We had Mercenaries 3D there. We have uh, a link to the past two for under 15 bucks. Although this one is uh, fully in Japanese, so there is that language barrier. But we have Bravely Default for under 10 bucks, and I believe this one does have English language support. And then we have these oddities. Uh, as you can see, it looks like there's about two or three in this uh, franchise. I have no idea what these are about. And they're kind of pricey. This one is almost 40 bucks. And as you can see from the screenshots, it looks like it's a funky puzzle building adventure game. Anyhow, we have the Pokemon games. And like Bravely Default, a few of these do have English language support. And you could... Uh, you reference that in Google to get uh, specific information on that. But here we have uh, Kid Icarus, another one that's uh, in the void of my backlog, which I hope to play that someday. Uh, we have Radiant Historia. Again, this is a console just loaded with uh, RPGs, action RPGs. We have the classic Ocarina of Time 3D. Anyhow, let's go to the next section. We have Nintendo DS. Now, this section is definitely a lot smaller, and the the reason for that is probably just because, you know, it's also a legacy console and they're trying to make way for the new stuff, the stuff that's selling to the kids nowadays. Anyhow, a number of Pokemon titles there. But here's one that I would like to play, this uh, this Dragon Ball uh, game. It seems to be an action-adventure game, and it's only 5 bucks. but I think I would rather have the North American version. But now looking at it back, I kind of regret not picking that one up. But we're just gonna skim over these games here. You know, we have a few uh, Phoenix Wright games which started life on the Game Boy Advance but definitely had a good life on the DS. But we have Wii and Wii U. Now, the Wii was an, another crazy popular system, not only in Japan but the world over. And it's a, a little bit slim pickings nowadays. But regardless, let's take a closer look. We have Mario Kart Wii for 14 bucks there, roughly. And then we have the Biohazard Chronicles value pack which includes uh, part one and two now these could also be played on the um, they're available on the PlayStation Network and freaking awesome games I haven't beat either of them or Ghost Squad but I, I am a fan of these light gun games and maybe one day I'll get to it there's just so many games a huge backlog here's one I did beat though Biohazard the remake which is classic and then we have the Dark Side Chronicles and the standalone version under 10 bucks like I said, those LEGO games, pretty exciting. They're pretty good. And then, uh, anyhow, we have Fatal Frame there for just under 30 bucks. Uh, 
and I think that one's stuck on the on the Wii, as well as this. I'm not sure what this is, but it's uh, 18 bucks, and it looks like it has like a 200 yen discount, and it seems to be like a visual novel horror type game. I could be totally wrong, but anyhow, we saw a Red Steel there and One Piece Unlimited Cruise. Now those One Piece games uh, are pretty fun uh, action games, but they do require a bit of time, a little bit of grinding, a few of them. But we have uh, The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword and Super Mario Galaxy for under five bucks. Now this one, as well as its sequel that we'll, we'll see that in a bit here, are definitely accessible um, as they're more about the gameplay and the story is pretty simple. But you will need a Japanese Wii or a Wii that is uh, region free to play these uh, Japanese versions. And then we have Kirby, the 20th, an uh, 20th Anniversary uh, Collection, which uh, seems to feature about six games. I, I wonder if it has any hidden games, but anyhow, we have Knights. Now, this is under five bucks. I played this back when it launched, and I remember it wasn't very good, and it didn't hold my interest, and I'll just put that one back on the shelf. Anyhow, let's keep the show moving. We have uh, Smash Bros, and they all seem to be going for about uh, 10 bucks. And then here we have the Dragon Quest Collection, which includes one, two, and three. A little bit over uh, 30 bucks, and I'm wondering... Now, uh, first of all, I didn't even know that this... Uh, it looks like there's more than three games, but I didn't even know that was released on the on the Wii, and I wonder if it's the same ones that were, were, were released on the Switch. Anyhow, we have the last story for under five bucks. Now, the North American version is definitely a lot more expensive, but this one is going to be heavy on the Japanese language. And then, oh, the Wii U. Let's go ahead and take a, a quick look as there wasn't much. But as you can see, a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, the major releases are available here. And the, the prices are, you know, between 10 and 50 bucks. So they're kind of all over the map. But anyhow, let's go ahead and take a look at the last section. And as you can see, we have tons and tons of loose handheld games. Now, mind you, you're not going to find anything that's obscure like the like the Neo Geo Pocket or Wonder Swan. It's just going to be a lot of like uh, Vita, DS, 3DS, Game Boy Advance, PSP. There's still a number of options there, but it's just too much to really uh, film all of this as this small section. You could easily spend an hour alone just kind of digging through that, which is sometimes part of the fun, right? But anyhow, that's where we're, this, that's pretty much going to be it for this video. Now, one thing that I do want to say is that I'm currently in uh, North America in the U.S. and I want to publish a few videos from my trip, namely my personal collection that I have in the U.S., as well as um, kind of showing like the old advertisement for 90s games from my old comics and magazines. But anyhow, those are going to be coming. But Thank you for watching Retro Rewire. My name is JJ and I hope to see you all very, very soon. Ciao.